Having seen this movie a few times now, this score is enough to send me into a full-on ugly cry wailing fit, because the nostalgic music itself now carries the weight of the film with it, and... <sighs> the point is Michael Giacchino is always a win, and he continues to prove it over and over and over. True or not, I like the assertion that the first emotion we experience as humans is joy. And of course the first console is just a single button when our emotions are extremely binary and simple. They clearly put some thought into making this as brain-like as possible. Can I just... If you could... I just want to fix that. <laughs> right from the beginning, Joey's trying to push sadness out, which is exactly how our brains work in the beginning. Also, of course, Leslie Nope is the embodiment of happiness. Also, can attest, that's exactly how a newborn's brain works. Solving the happy-sad flip-flop is pretty much the first week. Ha! <laughs> mind reader. So many levels, because they're in the mind, so it's like the newspaper of the mind, but also they are the mind, so they read minds, and it's what's happening right now. Uh, good, good stuff. Those heat waves above Anger's head are an insane detail. Can confirm. I mean, Jude happens to like broccoli, but he also likes throwing food and screaming loudly. Don't worry, this isn't going to turn into a Lee reminiscing about his son while occasionally talking about Inside Out. I just, uh, this movie gives me some feelings, alright? But also, very relatable. I've always hated being strapped into my car seat. Each core memory powers a different aspect of Riley's personality. You wouldn't think you could write something as obtuse as each core memory powers a part of Riley's personality island and have people easily follow along. Who knew? Ping Pong and his rocket ship. And a quick Happy Childhood Memories montage is the fastest way to get me tearing up before the title card. <laughs> I mean, funny visualization, but also accurate. A brain freeze pretty much makes all cognition stop for a second. That's like a really accurate recreation of Lombard Street. Nobody is dying. A dead mouse! Ah! One thing they capture so well is how emotions can be freaking out on the inside, but as we get older, even 11, we learn to have measured responses. And how your emotions can be totally chaotic fighting for control of how you're feeling. Hey, the pet collector. And is that supposed to be Arlo's tail? Nice little continuity between the mind world and the real world with the camera following the same arc and velocity in both. Oh, I was thinking more like rain. Personally, I identify more with sadness at this point. I love the rain. Really makes you want to stay home curled up with a good book. Philicisms aside, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way, but this movie still doesn't alienate me, which I give it credit for. Crying helps me slow down and obsess over the weight of life's problem. There's your takeaway. Pretty much the message in a nutshell that Joy cannot understand. Right there, 15 minutes in. Election via channel subgrouping? See? Fun already! Oh, you lucky dog! So I know this is a pretty good use of these actors, but it's got me thinking. Instead of separate Parks and Rec and the Office reunions, what if they did them together? We already know Phyllis, Kelly, and Leslie work well together. Even Anne slash Karen was in there. We're a total fraud! Do you think they could see through us? Of course not! We're wearing eyeshadow! This house stinks. Our room stinks. Pizza is weird here. Our friends are back home. And all of our stuff is in the missing van! I love how, even though each emotion occasionally expresses emotions outside their purview, generally their concerns are related to who or what they are. And the design of the emotions is amazing. They're not exactly corporeal. They more seem to be made up of light particles, and specifically with Joy, she's constantly leaving a sparky trail behind her. Stunning, really. If you and I can keep smiling, it would be a big help. We can do that for him, right? It ends up being something so simple that's the catalyst for this entire movie. An amazing statement about how impactful just asking your child to force an emotion can be. Mom and Dad, with us in public, no thank you. Yeah, I'm on it. Nope, I'm fine. Ha! <laughs> Love the impulse to be disgusted, which will grow with age. But the excitement about a new school and new day are too powerful at this stage in life. I really like that this is painted as something outside of Riley's control, since emotions can sometimes feel like that, especially as a kid. A traumatic experience like crying in front of your class on the first day at a new school could literally make you forget who you are and go into a complete panic shutdown mode. Not to mention it only dawning on Riley at this very moment that that part of her life is over now, making her question who she is now outside of Minnesota. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. And when there's no joy, it's hard to even pretend. It's all sarcasm though. Like in the decorating difference between the mom's laid-back command center versus the dad's militarized one. Cliché, but fun. It's also a hint as to what's coming since the mom's center emotion is sadness and the dad's is anger. A statement that maybe joy leading your emotions is only for children? Fourth time through. Whether letting go of your childish goofiness is a necessary part of growing up or not, this still absolutely destroys me. My wife too. As parents watching our son's life go by way too fast, and as children who remember when our own goofball islands were crushed. And again, this score is stabbing me in the existential dread part of my brain. Wait, Joy, you could get lost in there. Think positive. Okay, I'm positive you will get lost in there. Optimism, I mean, p -p positivism. No, I mean, go left. I said left was right, like, correct. 
Okay. And while Phyllis is yucking it up, Chikino's score is still playfully, quietly making us feel all the things. This actually feels kind of nice. Also, silver linings. You know what? Save chopsticks and heart and soul, get rid of the rest. Screw you, brain. No one has to remember chopsticks. But another accurate representation. Hey, okay, what do you think? Should we do it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go! <laughs> <laughs> Generosity. Also, nothing has ever been more accurately displayed. My brain bounces back and forth between $5 foot long and the best part of waking up. Oh, and also some ladders and scaffolds company. They may take you higher, but I don't remember the company name, so. This time, the personality island destruction is just plain epic. Also, that wide shot of the memory stacks from afar looking like brain matter. Attention to detail. Pizza Planet truck, oh, it's American ladders and scaffolds. I also love the visualization of some memories being unsorted or loose as a possible explanation for why it's hard to recall some things you would usually know. For, um, diversion! What? <laughs> so long, sucker! <laughs> Ingenuity. You gotta remember, when Riley was three, animals were all the rage. The cow goes moo, the horse goes neigh. Can confirm. Animal lessons. D-A-N-G-E-R, shortcut. And spelling lessons. Even in the abstract crazy town room, things make sense. Joy is basically rays of sunshine, sadness is just a blue blob, and Bing Bong is... Uh, a, a Dr. Seuss? And if you listen to the audio, it appropriately changes with the visuals. Going from surround in 3D to just front speakers in 2D and then mono for abstract. This isn't another one of your shortcuts, is it? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Honesty. Hey look! The House of Cards! Is that where Kevin Spacey's hiding? Also, pretty sure your dad already found you. So, yeah. If we take the situation literally, there's no way she can play hockey because the memory and connected personality trait is gone. But if you stretch just a tad, the emotional turmoil she's gone through the past few days would definitely make focusing on hockey pretty tricky. And once I embarrass myself for the second time in front of new people, I'm bailing. Angrily. Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I'm okay now. I actually appreciate how stubborn Joy continues to be. Even in the face of Sadness's success, she can't see past her own importance, much the way we treat the necessity of being happy. These facts and opinions look so similar. Ah, don't worry about it. it. Happens all the time. Take that, tribalistic political party members. We go back to Minnesota and make more. Ta-da! Wait, wait, wait. You're saying we run away? Sure, it's Anger's idea, but he only thought of it because Fear was trying to run away. Remind you of how great things were there. Our room, our backyard, our friends. That's the Paramount Arch, which is not Disney or Pixar, obviously, and that's an Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo poster, which was produced by Paramount. They're gonna claim this video, aren't they? Huh, wonder what that means. Oh well, let's go in. <laughs> While it's just a fun gag that Bing Bong can't read, it's also in line since he was created by a three-year-old. Hmm, what a fun idea. Since these people don't exist inside your mind, just your projection of them onto your own subconscious. Blobs. What is this place? The subconscious. Ha! Because it's below the subterranean conscious. Awesome. So we all have a creepy birthday clown sleeping deep in our subconscious? Did you say birthday? I have heard it likes birthdays. And floating. She took it. Another solid representation of how ideas can manifest. You may feel something would be a good idea, but until you act on it, it's just an idea. Also, did anger just incept Riley? There's deja vu, there's critical thinking, there's deja vu. Nah, just a glitch in the matrix. I went sad again, didn't I? I'll tell you what, we can keep working on that when we get back, okay? After multiple viewings, Joy starts to get on my nerves. Which, the irony and purpose of that is not lost on me, but just let sadness be sad. There's deja vu. Nah, just a glitch in the matrix. Another one that's a bit of a stretch for a real-world correlation, but have you ever done something you knew was wrong and gotten away with it? Your mind is consumed with it, and it could hinder all other thoughts. Definitely messing with your facts and opinions. Wait, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry! Riley needs to be happy. And another villainization of joy. Exactly the way our need to be happy can try to force out other necessary emotions. Do you remember how she used to stick her tongue out when she was coloring? Couple things. One, Amy Poehler, you're always a win. Two, I love the simple attention to detail of how she can't wipe the tear off the glass. Ever tried? That's exactly what happens. Come on, Joy, one more time. I got a feeling about this one. It doesn't really matter if you saw it coming, it's still self-sacrifice. A true picture of childhood that we all have to let go of at some point. Bing Bong! Yeah! You made it! 
But Bing Bong being happy? Because all he really cared about was Riley? Ugh. And then, that's immediately followed up by more existential dread. Do I exist? What if I'm just someone's memory? They borrowed some stuff for Coco from this one, huh? A113. This is the up corner of the brain. From that month, Riley was obsessed with up, with the couple next to their house, and his tie. And my legs don't work, and you have to drag me around while I touch all the- Pretty decent Phyllis impression. Just saying. Crossover. Hey! Come back here! Forget it, Jake. It's cloud town. Seriously, Mr. Giddies, you should know by now. <laughs> Emotional autopilot equals depression. Well done. <laughs> Definitely some imaginary resourcefulness. Did Disgust just use anger to burn a hole in the glass of Riley's emotional processing center? Just, just checking. I wanna go home. Please don't be mad. I miss Minnesota too. Sincerity that absolutely wrecks me. Wow. Talk about catharsis. In past videos, I've said that it's okay to feel things, but this... I doubt anyone can help but feel, in a literal sense, with Sadness being her own character who has been beaten down the entire movie by Joy reaching out to Joy and still doing what she thinks is best for Riley. And then in the more metaphysical sense of what Riley is actually going through, realizing that sorrow and happiness are not opposites. In one sense, to quote Jason Lee from Vanilla Sky, the sweet is never as sweet without the sour. But in an even more accurate and applicable sense, the joy that comes from experiencing sadness with your family, it's a hard concept to describe. Pixar did it profoundly with three images. The console being both blue and yellow, a tearful Riley being embraced by her parents, and a memory colored by both emotions. The mere fact that we do things like read Twilight not because of joy, but just fear and disgust is an interesting concept. Although to be honest, there are still probably a few emotions missing. And it gets even sadder when you realize that phones and social media are a huge part of our children's personalities. <sighs> Now the console can accommodate all the emotions at once, so they're not battling for control. Another great visualization of maturing. Also, thanks, Ratzenberger. All right, here you go. Your new expanded console is up and running. What's puberty? I don't know. It's probably not important. Whoa. Exactly. This new console is done. Sorry, I did it again. My Button push censoring. Just in case. Like I said, fear is currently making up for other missing emotions. Oh. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Disgust is puking, and fear isn't really afraid. Uh, cats. Hey, Ralph was here. I have a lot of thoughts and emotions about this film's themes and messages. So many that I've decided I'm finally going to get around to that Lessons Animation Taught Us video to make Mikey Newman from Movies with Mikey proud. I was going to do a full conclusion and then a whole separate video later on, but as I started writing both together, I realized that I had way too much overlap to explain myself. So for this video's conclusion, I'm just going to talk about more surface level stuff. And don't misunderstand, surface level isn't a dig. Without it, this movie's message loses all weight. So that next video should be done not next week, but probably the week after. Anyway, on with it. There are a ton of fun details per usual for a Pixar film. The animation style and general attention to detail is astounding. The cotton candy fibers and fur that form Bing Bong, the realistic looking and moving lava, the playing card physics, and the background details you may not consciously notice, like how Anger, voiced perfectly by the embodiment of Anger itself, Louis Black, is the typical angry old man of the group and is always reading a newspaper with an applicable headline. Or the way the inside of Riley's mind reflects her age and what's currently happening. Imagination Lane is dusty and deteriorating while things like the boyfriend generator are brand new looking. Or how often Riley wears the color that represents her emotional state, wrapped in a yellow blanket, wearing a yellow coat. Her initial jersey was possibly a hint at the need for a little joy mixed with aggression when playing hockey. And once she runs away and has no access to her emotions, she's in all black. Even her mom wears yellow once they get to San Francisco since she feels like she has to put on a brave face for her husband and pretend to be happy. Or how other things in the film seem to be color-coded to specific emotions like the vacuum she's afraid of and the dead Remy, I mean rat, she's disgusted by. And then I talked about how ethereal the emotions look. It's really highlighted in Joy's solo scenes. Every performance was spectacular. It feels mean to say that Phyllis Smith really plays sadness well, but man, she knocks it out of the park. Bill Hader's range continues to astound me. He's the type of voice actor that disappears into the character. And then Richard Kind made me feel all the things. Obviously without Amy Poehler, who again, such a perfect cast, but without her, you lose the heart of the film. She makes you love and hate her all at the same time. <laughs> Everything about this film is absolutely fantastic. Before I even start thinking about what the movie is saying, it's already impressed me quite a bit. And if you want to hear about that, check out my Lessons Animation Taught Us video that will be linked in the description and eventually in the end cards. There's no win counter, but the mere fact that this film has enough going on for another video is worth 25 wins. Plus, I counted things I would have winned and it was another 13 wins, so there you go. 
next week a serious undertaking. We take you higher. We take you higher.